Good morning, everybody. It's Jennifer, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to the first Draw With Me video in my series um, that's called Draw and Chill and Book Talk with Jennifer. Um, so, let's get started. Pull your diamond kids out, and we'll talk about the books I've been reading this week. And... Also, the podcast that I've been listening to also. Um, the first book, uh, well, first of all, let's get up to date here on this week. Um, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a live tomorrow. If there is, there's going to be one tomorrow night. Um, I want to, sorry, I want to go ahead and get this business out of the way. Um, we are supposed to go uh, to my best friend's house uh, tomorrow to go swimming. We didn't get to go last week, and so um, we're supposed to go this week, this weekend. Um, if it's not tomorrow, then I will, you know, either way, there will be a live, but, you know, if we go tomorrow, it'll be at, you know, tomorrow night. Um, I just wanted you guys to be aware that way, you know, Nobody's wondering where, um, where I am and what's going on and so forth. Also, guys, um, please pray for um, Mrs. Coffee and her family and uh, her father, David Papa Harris. Um, it seems like. They're having a mess going on this week, so let's just pray for them and keep them, um, you know, in our prayers because they're going through some stuff right now. Um, that, that being said, okay, enough of that. Okay, um, as I said last week or a couple of, well, the last week or whatever, Monday, I guess, I don't even remember. See, I'm totally out of it, guys. <sighs> I'm tired. My back hurt, um, so just bear with me if I, you know, sound like I'm going all over the place. Um, I told you guys that I was going to start the book talk drill with me, and I was going to do two different, you know, drill with me's and have one that is um, for a book, you know, you know, my book talk and talking about the books I've read. And then the other was going to be for, um, the, um, podcast, but I just decided to put that all in here. Um, to me, it's easier. So, you know, yeah, I mean, if you don't, if you want to see it, you know, a different set of videos for that, you know, please let me know, comment below and let me know. So, anyway, um, I had told you guys that I like Patricia Cromwell. Now, you know, I don't, I think she's the only one out of all the suspense, crime, you know, drama, thrillers, or whatever you call them. Um, I'm not even sure of the correct genre for that. I, I totally have no clue. Um, she seems to be really the only one besides, well, I, of course, I haven't read um, any from this author yet, uh, besides Tammy Hogue that I thought was interesting. Um, I did try to read some of Kathy Rakes, but I just couldn't get into her books just because, I guess, because I started watching um, the TV show Bones, and it just, it may, it, to me, the, the the character in the book wasn't portrayed, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. I just didn't like the TV show. That's just me. But anyway, so I love Patricia Cromwell. I always, you know, try to read them, but my only thing is I've never read them, you know, in order. So, um, thriftbooks.com, those of you that, you know, read and know, you know, about this, about this website app, I found, um, the first three 
books that she wrote about um, Kay Scarpetta, which Kay Scarpetta is a um, a coroner in the state of Virginia in Richmond. And she, you know, she's pretty good at what she does. Well, she goes one step farther than just being um, the coroner. Instead of just doing the autopsy and just leaving it, she, you know, takes it a step further and starts investigating and helping um, this detective, uh, you know, basically, you know, they basically, you know, investigate the crime and solve the crime, so forth. Well, um, the book that I that I just finished reading of hers was Postmortem. And that's the very first book in the Case Scarpetta um, series. And she is, um, doing an autopsy on a doctor. Actually, she's called to the scene and it's a doctor. And anyway, long story short, her husband is the one that finds her. Well, you know, thinking that it's a regular homicide, well, then when she gets, when Dr. Scarpetta, you know, is standing there investigating the detective, uh, and his name is um, Marino, tells her, you know, that this is like, I forget, no, I forget how many he said right off the top of my head. I think there was like three or four, you know, before this woman. And they were all, I guess they were supposed to be single women. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, they, uh, you know, were all found, you know, dead, and the way that they were found was pretty, pretty gruesome, and I won't, I won't tell you, it was disgusting, and yeah, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't like that whole issue either, so yeah, it was disgusting. So... Anyway, she goes and, and the, 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 the victim that she's investigating, or that she's, uh, the scene that she's called to, she's a doctor. Her husband is a, um, what is it, some kind of an actor. He's a, he plays, he, he acts and plays. He's not like, you know, this big, you know, actor from Broadway or anything like that. But he does act and plays. Well, he, I guess, had, you know, supposedly come home and um, found her, and he had just come from being out of town. So, um, they find out, they find out that there's other women that have the same, um, that there's other women that have been murdered that have the same patterns, so forth, and they find out it's a serial killer. Well, in the meantime, of her investigating all of this, and I'm sorry if I'm loud, guys, I'm not trying to be. Um, in the meantime of investigating all of this, she is also dealing with uh, office politics in her in her office. Um, somebody has kind of broken into her, uh, their computer system at the morgue, and it's making, and they made it, they're, they've made it look like that Dr. Scarpetta was the one that leaked this information out, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to get, they're trying to cause her to lose her job, basically. And... And of course, you know, here we go. So anyway, she, you know, she figures out that it's not, you know, that who it is. And in the meantime, you know, she's investigating this murder. Well, 
they come down, they 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 get they come across they come down they narrow down to two people. One is a uh, cop that Dr. Scarpetta was dating, but only reason that they that that came out was because um, the reporter that was you know following the the serial killer the serial killings apparently had you know I guess some kind of relationship with this detective beforehand and they you know anyway it didn't end very well let's put it that way so you know she you know became scared and you know she kept trying to get this you know detective in trouble well in the meantime her sister ends up being one of the serial killers victims so you know they just assume that it's this detective but it's not and of course you know you don't find that out until like you know a little while later so they they start investigating and come to find out that the sister wasn't supposed to be there. The sister was supposed to be um, out of town. And so the reporter was the one that was supposed to be the victim, but she didn't get home in time or something. So long story, so, you know, add into that. So finally, they, you know, Dr. Scarpetta and, you know, Detective Marino start, you know, investigating in, in, more in depth into these murders. And in every home, the backs, one of the screens, one of the windows was always unlocked. It could have been from, you know, the homeowner doing it that's how the, the killer was getting in so they narrowed it down to finally they you know they realized okay well this other detective didn't do it you know blah 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 but you know he you know was in trouble anyway so they narrowed it down to I think it was the husband. See, it's, it's been a couple weeks since I finished this, so it's kind of hard to remember because um, I didn't even think about writing down, writing any kind of notes for this. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. I guess I'm gonna have to be prepared. But um, they come across saying, you know, they 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 suspect the husband. Well, they never stopped suspecting the husband and there were two reasons why um, he was arrested a couple years I guess a while before for rape and anyway, they found out. Well, then, oh my gosh, then they were saying that, then they found out that, you know, the victim wanted a divorce or something. Well, you know, that didn't help because you know they had a big argument and not only that he didn't live at home during the week so that would have given her you know any you know given her you know ample time to basically have an affair if she wanted it well
they figured out that he, you know, did this rape however long ago. And, but in the meantime, somebody is, oh no, I'm going all craziness here. But in the meantime, they figure out that, like I said, it wasn't the detective that, you know, she was dating. It was, you know, he wasn't involved. And um, so they figure out it's the husband. The, the, the reasoning behind the way <coughs> that it was described as to why the husband did this was because and you know this is how you know this is why I like this kind of stuff was because you know he had it in his mind <coughs> that she um number one was cheating on him number two she like you know having you know doing having relations you know all right just having sex roughly she didn't and I guess you know there's there was a couple of times that you know she refused or whatever and of course you know so that's basically what it boiled down to. He was frustrated because, you know, she wouldn't, I guess, have sex with him. And, you know, they obviously hadn't had, you know, any kind of, you know, sexual relations and whatever. So it was kind of like, he was frustrated and but he had already had a problem anyway beforehand so he he found he decided he wanted to know what Dr. Scarfetto what you know knew and well that didn't end very well so basically it was the husband but, I mean, it was a really good book, and, you know, at first I thought, when I started reading her books, I didn't think I was going to like them. But, you know, that was a really good book. I mean, her books are really good because, you know, she, she doesn't just revolve around the crime, you know, the crime itself. She revolves around her life, even though that, I mean, her life doesn't take up the whole entire, you know, book or whatever. She revolves it around her, you know, the crime, the investigation, and, you know, Dr. Scarpetta's life, and her friendship with Detective Marino, and, you know, her and her niece, Lucy. And it's, you know, it's a really good book, and I would really, really, I, to me, truthfully, I would say read them. I have, you know, I'm, I have the next two, and I'm reading the next one now, so, but, I mean, yeah, it, they're really good books, I really like them, I mean, if you like those kind of things, you know, that's, I would definitely say, you know, read it, and it's called Postmortem, and I'm reading her second one now, which is called Body of Evidence, and I haven't, haven't even started, I'm gonna, actually, I haven't started, I looked last night, so tonight or today, because um, I'm resting my back today, I pulled a muscle on my back yesterday, so I'm going to relax and put a heating pad on my back and start reading that. Um, the next one that I just finished also, of course, you know, I'm one of these ones that, you know, if I don't read, if I can't, if I yeah sometimes I read two books at a time so bear with me um I don't know how many of you like Tom Clancy 
I have always loved Tom Clancy. Bleh, Clancy. There we go. Um, my dad is a big fan of Tom Clancy. And he had almost all of his books. And when I moved out and, you know, moved into my own apartment, house, whichever, um, I really didn't have that many books, you know, at home. And I had been reading the Tom Clancy books when I was living at home. So, he, you know, basically gave them to me and said, here you go, you know. Um, but I have been reading all his um, Jack Ryan series, and I love his, I love them. And um, after he died, because he died a couple years ago, and I really didn't think, you know, he was going to do any more because I thought, okay, you know, this is done. Jack Ryan's done. There's nothing else to write. Uh, no. He wrote some more. And um, there was one I didn't really like. Um, I forget what it's called. I think it's called The Teeth of the Tiger. I can't remember. And I didn't really like that one as much because it wasn't Jack Ryan. It was his son, Jack Ryan Jr. I just couldn't get into that one. But I understand why he wrote that. And so anyway, when he, uh, a couple years ago, they started coming out. He started um, having more books published. And it was with um, author called Mark Greeny, Greeny, Greeny. I think that's his name I can't remember um and this was one of the books and it was called a command authority now in this book Jack Ryan senior is now um the president of the United States for the second time and um A new president has come or has emerged in Russia. Now, this takes place, you know, in the present. Um, and basically, you know, there are, you know, so quote, supposed to be a democracy. But I really, you know, I don't. There's a couple, you know, differences in, you know, the whole, in the book. But, and I, you know, of course, I think that's why. Um, anyway, they, a new president decides to basically emerge in Russia. And he's decided to set a plot. To return Russia to communism. So it's basically, you know, President Jack Ryan trying to, you know, stop him from doing so. Well, in the meantime, um, his son is kind of CIA but isn't. I guess that's what you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call them. They, the agency that he works for doesn't exist in public eye. That makes any sense. And he starts, you know, figuring things out. And then, um, Eventually, him and his father and a, another person, John Clark, work to bring Russia 
back into democracy. And in the meantime, you know, it's all this, you know, political conspiracy and, you know, all this other, you know, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, if you like that kind of thing, I, I mean, like I said, those are pretty good books. That's a pretty good book. I mean, Josh, I've never read, I've read a couple of his op center ones. I haven't really, you know, because I've always been hooked on, you know, Jack Ryan, but you have, I can't, I don't even remember, but I mean, it's like, you have to start at the beginning, and I can't even remember to tell you what book is first, but it's, there are characters that come out in each book that later on, you know, is in the, the whole thing, in the, you know, I know I'm not explaining it very well, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, so that's basically the two books I've read this week, and I'm still, I mean, I'm reading, I'm, st I'm in the middle of reading one now, uh, which is North, the North and South, uh, trilogy that, you know, this, about the Civil War, and two families in the Civil War, and that's going to be a while, because I'm reading all three books, there's three books in the series, um, North and South, Love and War, and Heaven and Hell. So I'm in the middle of Love and War now. So yeah, you, that, I won't get to those until later. Um, but, you know, I would recommend Patricia Cromwell strongly. I love her stories. And I'm always, you know... looking to see if she has any new books. I haven't looked lately, but yeah, that's one, definitely one author that I would recommend. And I mean, I'm telling you, she is just, she's awesome to um, read. And I do listen to her on um, Audible sometimes. And because it's like, you know, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but when you're, you know, in the middle of, uh, you know, when you're reading a book and you're picturing in your mind, you know, what, like the room that you're sitting, it may, it, it, I feel like I'm there. If that mean, you know, if that gives you any kind of, you know. I feel like I'm in the room, you know, visualizing the story and, you know, but yeah. So that's it for those two. But, you know, those were, those two books were really awesome books. So I would, you know, strongly recommend them. Um, uh, and that's it for those. Now, as for a podcast, um, I didn't know if I wanted to do this, like I said. I didn't know if I want to make this wanted to make this a separate series, you know, Drill With Me series. I just didn't want to have too many Drill With Me's on my um on my channel because I didn't want y'all to get like, you know, totally irritated and turned off and you know. So I'm just gonna leave it with this and go from there. Um of course, when I started it, now, I came across podcasts, and y'all are going to laugh at me. I'm really, really behind the times. I'm 50 years old. Going on, well, going on 50 years old. And I have never, ever listened to a podcast in my life. Since, I mean, I knew that, you know, I knew podcasts existed. But... I never, uh-uh, I've never listened to them. It took me a while to do audiobooks, too. But, you know, and I found that those are, you know, pretty, you can do those, you know, when you're cross-stitching or whatever. And when I found out about podcasts, and you know, I, it was funny how I found out about it, because I had posted um, on uh 
one of my groups and had made the statement that mm, I was diamond, excuse me, diamond painting and listening to a book. And of course, you know, somebody then said, you know, what's good to listen to is podcasts. Now, one thing, one thing is about, you know, I'm a true crime freak. I love true crime. And, you know, I watch, you know, I watch true crime all the time. I watch, well, that's, you know, that's not even a show. It's a, it's a, it's, I watch true crime on TV all the time. Now, I haven't watched Dateline and um, 48 Hours as much, but, or Forensic Files like I used to. I need to get back and watching that again. But I love that kind of stuff. And I don't know why, I don't know what, you know, how I got hooked on that kind of stuff. I think, I think part of it was because, um, the summer before I was born in 1969, um, those of you that remember this, was the Zodiac Killer was, you know, real big in San Francisco. And not only that, um, that hitman that was going around, what was his name? He was called the Iceman. And um, that's kind of how I got hooked on it. And then, of course, you know, I had to do a book report in um, high school on... I think it was Ted Bundy, the Hillside Strangler, one of them. And it was just, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, because I was fascinated, I just had to do the report. I was given that topic. Don't ask me why. So I kind of got hooked after that because it was interesting to see how this man became what he became. So, I mean, I've always, I, I don't know why, I've always gotten, you know, hooked on that stuff. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what it, what, why it's, I don't know. I have no clue. Who knows? Um, and I try to watch all the true crime, you know, things on TV and try to, you know, read, you know, whatever. So when I found out about the podcast, because I'm going all crazy and I'm rambling on and I'm very, very sorry, guys. Um, when I found out about the podcast, you know, and somebody had said, you know, true crime. So I, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to look it up. Sure enough, I found them. And there's a couple that I'm really, you know, into listening to. It's one is called True Crime All the Time. And the other is True Crime All the Time Unsolved. So, and I've been kind of trying to, you know, listen, binge listen to them from the beginning. Well, I got on to episode three, four, yesterday, and I, and I was, you know, sitting there and listening, and it was about this man, now he wasn't considered a serial killer, he wasn't considered a serial killer, I'm not sure you know, how he got put into, you know, that kind of, you know, thing when, you know, he was, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, his name was Richard Eisman Kleblinski, I don't know, don't ask me, 
but I, you know, I just got to the point I was calling him my ACM. And, you know, he really, and I remember, you know, hearing this because, you know, they finally arrested him, um, I think a year before I graduated high school. I graduated high school in 1987. So I'm thinking, you know, around then. I can't remember. It's been a while. So, and I remember hearing, you know, about this guy. I mean, this guy was, you know, this hitman. Now, how he started in it, and I kind of thought this was kind of sad as to how he became what he became. When he was 14, um, he was being bullied in school. Well, instead of, I guess, you know, walking away like what we've taught, or, you know, but like we've, what we've taught our children to do or, you know, he gets a, I guess it's a dowel rod. I don't know if that's, you know, I'm not sure. Anyway, he gets a dowel rod and, I mean, a really, really heavy one. And I guess there are. I don't know. I don't know anything about, you know, dowel rods. Don't ask me. So, and he, you know, he beats the crap out of this 14-year-old kid and kills him. And becomes what he becomes. And um, it was just weird how he, he had no emotion whatsoever. But the funny thing is, he, he got married, he had children, and, and it just, it, I, I, I was just sitting there and I'm like, okay, how can you be married and have children when you have no, I guess, no emotion? I don't know. It, it that, to me, I'm still trying to figure, you know, that one out, because I, I don't understand that with, you know, I, I don't have a psychology degree, and I probably should, you know, do that, just so, you know, when you're doing the, when I'm watching, you know, this, these shows and listening to these shows, you know, you, you know, whatever, and it's it just, it was just weird, I mean, I, I was sitting there, and I was listening, and, you know, this guy, you know, instead of, um, when he started out, he, I forget how he got hooked up with the mob. I can't remember. But anyway, he became a hitman for the mob. That's how he started. Then, of course, you know, he started branching out. And, um, Instead of, you know, killing them, you know, with like in the normal fashion that a hitman will kill them after he started branching out, he started using um, cyanide because he had told someone that it wasn't messy. And I, I was just like, you know, I don't get it. It, it just, I, I don't understand. And it just, it, it, I know y'all think I'm crazy and weird. I'm sorry. I, I just think, you know, this kind of stuff is kind of, yeah, exciting. Don't ask me why. I'm just really, really fascinated with this mess. But it just, it blew me away that he just, you know, he did this. And, uh, and I was, when I was listening yesterday to them, the podcast, they were talking about, um, there was one instance that, um, I can't remember if they, if he had to perform the hit, the murder hit, whatever, in 
the hotel or what. But anyway, yeah, because they performed it in the hotel room. So anyway, well, they performed this, you know, he, he killed this person in the hotel room. Now, to me, I thought this was just totally gross. And, you know, it just kind of made me, you know, like, you know, feel creepy inside. After he did this, after he, you know, killed the guy, the person, or whatever he was, they put him, put the body between the mattresses of the hotel bed, and people, you know, came, checked in, and slept on it. And I just, I was just, when I, when I heard that, I was like, you're kidding me, right? It just, I, I, I was just like, okay. And nobody smelled this person. It took three to four days before they finally, you know, smelled the person. And to me, that's just, that's gross. But then again, you know, that's just me. All right, hold on a minute, guys. I'm trying to, like... There. Okay. Sorry. I don't know why it was, like, really close like that. It wasn't supposed to be. I just thought it was gross. I was like, seriously? It, it just... I, I, I'm... And it just fascinates me that he did this for so long before he was caught. And, you know, and not only that, you know, his, his family had no clue what he'd been doing all this time. And it was just, it's just weird how, you know, and it just, it amazes me, you know, and he, and when he's, you know, when he was interviewed, he was like, you know, he had no, he had no remorse, no emotion whatsoever. And I was just sitting there and I'm like. Okay, how the hell can you not, you know, have any kind of remorse for anything? But, you know, then you realize, okay, well, these people aren't, you know, wired like, you know, normal people. And, you know, it just kind of, I don't know. I just kind of like, okay, so I know y'all going to think I'm freaking strange, weird, crazy, because I like this kind of mess. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know where, you know, where it came from. I, it just, it amazes me to watch some of these, you know, these shows and he listen to some of these things and, you know, you're like, okay, where does this come from and why, you know, it just, it, it just fascinates me how, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I know I'm weird. I'm crazy. I'm cuckoo. I'm already cuckoo anyway, but still. So, um, let's see. Um, and I started listening, um, and I didn't get to finish, I'll probably do that this weekend, um, was uh, the BTK killer, which I had no clue about anything about him until I um, had watched it on TV. And I was like, how does a man for 30 freaking years get away with this crap and nobody knows I mean, it just it was just like you know how don't ask me you know like I said I'm crazy too strange because I like this kind of crap and um but yeah I'm reading I'm listening about that I just think it's just crazy that you know okay um
Um, let's see. I think that's it for that. But anyway, the, the podcast, I've been listening to several, but the podcast that I've been re- listening to recently is called True Crime All the Time. And these guys, you know, are, they update every week almost. And they research this kind of stuff to length and, you know, give you information that I, I was shocked. I was like, wow. Okay. So, um, and I'll even put, the name of it in the description of this video but um but that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this you know if you have any suggestions on how I can make it more you know fun or whatever you know um let me know and if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and thank you for listening. I know it was kind of boring. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I will put the link to thriftbooks.com down into the description as well as the name of the podcast. If anybody likes to, you know, listen to podcasts. Um, And thank you guys for listening, and I hope you have a good week. Again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you like the video, please, you know, hit the like button, and I will see you all next time. And um, again, guys, I'm not sure about tomorrow, if there will be a live tomorrow during the day or tomorrow night. One way or the other, I'll let you guys know. All right, and you guys have a good week. Thanks, and have a great day.